This is an Audi e-tron, and it's a fully electric SUV. No, this isn't a trim level of the Q5 or an electric version of the Q7. It is a brand new model, and it's Audi's first electric SUV designed to compete with the Jaguar I-Pace and the Tesla Model X. And today, I'm going to review it. I've borrowed this e-tron from Audi South Coast, which is an Audi dealership here in Orange County, California. Obviously, they have all of the latest new Audi models, although they don't quite have the e-tron just yet as it doesn't go on sale for another month or two. But they have this one temporarily, and they invited me to come check it out, so that's what I'm doing. First, a few details about the e-tron. Now, the e-tron is about 193 inches long, which makes it about the same length as a BMW X5 or a Lexus RX, and it's about six inches shorter than the Audi Q7. And the e-tron has two rows of seats. The EPA says the electric range is 204 miles, but more impressive is the power output, 400 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque. The result is zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. Of course, if you're thinking about getting one of these, one of your big questions is probably pricing. Audi says the e-tron will start around $75,000, which makes it about $7,000 cheaper than the base level Tesla Model X. Although the e-tron is a little bit more expensive than the Jaguar I-Pace, which starts around $70,000. Now, both the Model X and the I-Pace have a little longer electric range than the e-tron, although the e-tron has a little bit more power than the I-Pace, so the e-tron seems to be priced about right among mid-size electric luxury SUVs. So today, I'm going to check it out. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of the e-tron and show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the e-tron, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of the best older Audi models currently listed for sale on Autotrader. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the e-tron with my three very favorite quirks. And that means starting with the hum. Yes, there is a hum. It's for pedestrian safety. And when you shift into drive, you can hear it. Take a close listen. So every time you're driving down the road in your e-tron, it is making that little humming sound to alert pedestrians that you're coming, because otherwise it would make no sound at all, and that's considered to be unsafe. Interestingly, there's a different hum when you shift into reverse. Again, take a listen. I love this because it's all electric. The e-tron doesn't make an engine noise, but instead you have this little engineered hum sound to alert pedestrians that your e-tron is coming. It's wonderful. Now, my next favorite e-tron quirk is the charge door and specifically how the charge door opens. It's located here. You look at it and you're like, how do you get it open? Do you push it? No, that doesn't do it. Instead, you push this little black button at the top right of the charge door and then Look at that, it automatically sort of lifts itself down to reveal the charge port. I absolutely love how that operates, and it operates the same way. When you go to close it, you just push the button, and then it lifts itself back up, much better than a manual opening charge door like so many other cars. Now, speaking of charging, probably the coolest charging-related thing with the e-tron is the fact that it can charge at 150 kilowatts. Now, if you're not into electric vehicles and they're charging, basically what that means is it can charge really, really fast fast. In fact, this thing can charge 80% in 30 minutes, which is about 160 miles of charge in just 30 minutes. By comparison, Tesla is only charging about 120 kilowatts, and so they charge a little bit slower. This is the fastest charging electric car of them all. Unfortunately, you can't have 150 kilowatts at your house, but there are fast charging stations that Audi is building where you can plug in and charge up that quickly. 
And my next favorite quirk of the e-tron, you notice the moment you climb inside, and that would be the gear lever. You look at this thing and your first thought is, what is this and how do I use it? Or at least that's what I thought. Here's how this works. You put your hand on this black leather piece on top, but the part that actually changes gears is this silver toggle off to the left. So you turn the car on and obviously you're in park. To put it into drive, you move this little silver toggle down and then you're in D. Nothing happens to the black panel on top. It just stays put the whole time. If you want to move into reverse you push the silver toggle forward and then you're in reverse and neutral is in between it's sort of like a half push on the silver toggle switch thing if you want to go back to park there's a little button on the side of the silver thing you just press it and then you're back in park and that is the gear lever operation in the e-tron very unorthodox another interesting item you'll notice when you climb inside this one to the left of the steering wheel is the little storage cubby over there now a lot of cars have a storage cubby to the left of the wheel but this one has a huge one you open that door you can see the owner's manual is in there not in the glove box that cubby is so massive you can stick an owner's manual in there and frankly a lot of other stuff if you want to hide it from the rest of your passengers in your e-tron. Another interesting item is in the center console. If you retract this little lid in the middle, you can see it's a little storage cubby, but it's also cup holders. You have to kind of pull them out and then they become cup holders, or you can push them back in and they go back to being storage. Now to the left of that little cup holder storage cubby, you have your wireless phone charging system. And you can see there's a pretty substantial clip in there. That clip is designed to hold your phone in place while it charges. Some cars just have a wireless charging mat if you get in an accident, your phone will go flying. This one theoretically will keep it a little bit more in place around corners or other abrupt movements. Another interesting item inside the e-tron is the door release. First off, the door handle is kind of cool looking, a little bit more thrilling and exciting than the door handle in other Audi models. But more interesting than that is how it operates. If you pull on the door handle, it's actually electric and it pops open the door automatically. And then from there, you push it open like a normal door. It's not just a mechanical door release like in most cars. And another interesting item in the interior of the e-tron, you'll notice this steering wheel has paddles, which is kind of a neat trick because this car doesn't have a traditional transmission with gears. So what do they do? Well, the left paddle, the downshift paddle, activates more regen. And if you pull it while you're driving, you can really feel this car start to slow down because it's kind of using the power system to regenerate and gain more range. If you pull the paddle on the right, it gives you more power. So you pull that if you're trying to go up a hill or something maybe and it'll give you a little bit more juice so you can get up a little faster or without having to go so deep into the throttle and next up moving on to some of the tech features in this car i want to start with the gauge cluster now in its natural state the gauge cluster has a very cool range display you can see it's like this car driving on a street but the street actually shows the range and you can see that it's green and it gives how many miles you have left obviously as you start to drive more it'll probably turn yellow and red to let you know, hey, maybe it's time to charge this thing. Another interesting item on that screen, there is a little display on there that shows your kilometers per kilowatt hour, and it will show it instantaneously as you drive. This is a measure of how efficiently you're driving, just like an instant fuel economy gauge in a normal gas-powered car. Now that we're in the world of electric cars, this is what you have instead, and it kind of shows are you driving efficiently and maximizing your range, or are you driving inefficiently, and maybe you could do a little bit better. The other thing I absolutely love in this gauge cluster, you can go over to the map and see basically a 3D bird's eye view of precisely where you are in the direction you're pointing. This is still probably the best gauge cluster map view in the entire car industry, that it shows this actual 3D image with the buildings around you. I think this is absolutely fantastic and good for people who have a difficult sense of direction and can't always tell which way they're pointing or whether they're facing towards Target or their house or whatever. Now, next up, we move on to the center screens. And I say screens because there are two of them. There's a lower screen and an upper screen. Now, the lower screen is primarily for the climate 
climate controls and it works pretty easily. You turn it on and then you have all your climate control adjustments right there. You can turn on your heated seats, your cooled seats. That's pretty standard. And you can also change the temperature. One thing I like about this, you can change the temperature one degree at a time with these little plus minus buttons or you can swipe your finger and it brings out a different display and then you can change the temperature many degrees at a time, which is one of the benefits of having a screen like this. You can do the same thing for fan speed. But generally speaking, this is a pretty simple, easy to use climate control screen, very responsive to your touch. And I like it, it makes it pretty easy to change everything. But then we move on to the upper screen, which has more quirks and features. I wanna start with the fragrance. Like in some newer luxury cars, you can turn on a fragrance to blow through the climate vents when you have the climate control on to make sure your interior always smells nice. Now, which smells can you choose? Well, you can choose between winter and summer. And then you can choose the amount of fragrance between subtle, light, medium, and strong. Now this confuses me a little bit because what exactly does medium summer smell like? What does subtle winter smell like? <laughs> Pretty much every other car I've ever been in with a fragrance, the fragrance is named like Mercedes-Benz Lilac or something like that. But in this car, you have summer and winter. Whatever that smells like, I guess, is up to Audi. Now, the next interesting infotainment item is the 3D camera system. You shift into reverse and you get your typical backup camera and your top-down camera, but you press 3D and you can also get this 3D camera. I've mentioned this in other cars, but I just think it is such a cool trick. You can move this 3D camera around your e-tron and see exactly where you are, everything that's around you, as if there's some camera like literally following you around. It makes parking tremendously easy. You can get right up next to the curb because you can see precisely where the curb is from the outside. It's a really amazing feature. Now, next up, here is another one of my very favorite quirks with the e-tron. If you go into the infotainment system, it's something called vehicle information, you can see an item called range potential. And right now you can see it says plus eight miles climate control. What that means is if I turned off the climate control, it would add eight miles. That would be my range potential if I stopped using the climate controls. So you go and turn off the climate controls and you can see the range potential goes away. Now you're maximizing your range, not doing anything Thing that would cause a decrease in range and you can see the range number increases. Now, if I go back and turn the climate controls back on, once again, the range potential shows that I am missing out on eight miles of potential range because I'm running the climate controls. This is a great idea. Basically, it tells you all the stuff in your car that's making it less efficient and it's telling you what exactly to turn off if you want to improve your efficiency and extend your range. That's a brilliant idea. And another brilliant feature in this car is something called the integrated toll module. This is the first car ever with this feature. And what it does is it has a toll transponder integrated into the car. So you no longer need a transponder for easy pass or fast track or peach pass or sun pass or whatever they call it in your state. Instead, it's built right in. You just go onto this website, you register your vehicle ID number with the transponder and then you can drive on all the highways without worrying about getting a citation or three different passes in your windshield. That is a really smart idea. I hope that goes throughout the entire car industry in the next few years. And finally, the last really cool thing about the infotainment system is the navigation destination entry, which I just love. The best in the industry by far. You go to enter a destination in the nav system and then the lower screen turns into a pad where you can write your destination. But unlike virtually every other car, you can write full words at once. You don't have to go letter by letter and wait for the system to accept it. So you can write out a word, write out another word, the car instantly understands what you've said, and then you can have it navigate you there. That is just fantastic. It works really well. And I love when you write that it looks like sort of an electronic whiteboard, perfectly matching whatever you've just done with your finger. And next we move on to the back seat of the e-tron, which is fairly unremarkable in terms of size, decently roomy for legs and head, frankly about what you'd expect from a mid-size luxury SUV, X5, Lexus RX, etc. 
pretty similar to all of those. Two interesting items in the back seat. One is the fact that you have the same cool door handles as you have up front and the same electronic door release. So you pull the door handle and it automatically sort of pops out rather than a mechanical release like most doors. You also have a little climate control electronic touchpad at the back of the front center console, which you can use to adjust where the air is flowing, how much air, your rear temperature, that sort of thing. It's very responsive to your touch, very easy to use and it makes the back seem a little bit more futuristic and advanced. Now, next up, I want to discuss some of the e-tron's interesting exterior quirks and features. And I want to start with the grille, which is different from what you see in most Audis. Most Audis have grills with horizontal slats or no slats at all. This one has these vertical silver lines in the middle that kind of distinguishes it from other Audi models. But my favorite piece of design up front is not the grille, but rather the turn signal. You can see when the front turn turn signal goes on, it looks like, like a construction zone arrow warning. Part of it lights up, and then the rest of it lights up sort of in a sweeping motion, which is a very, very cool look. Now, another lighting item I like in the front is the LED running lights. When the running lights are on, you have your typical Audi LED running light look like most other Audis have, but you also have this little panel with four horizontal LED lights over on the side, which is a nice look and kind of distinctive. And it matches is a similar look in back when you have the headlights on the taillights also light up with a little red panel of horizontal LED lights stacked on top of each other which also looks cool the other noteworthy thing in back that happens when you turn on the headlights is that the light bar lights up across the entire back of the e-tron. Now, light bars are becoming more and more common in the car industry. It's a new trend, and the e-tron has it too. It helps it look a little bit more futuristic. And speaking of looking futuristic, one of the interesting things about the e-tron is the fact that it doesn't really. From the outside, you can see this looks just like a normal luxury crossover. You wouldn't think that it's anything cool, futuristic, special electric like the Tesla Model X and the Jaguar I-Pace, both of which have sort of unusual designs to catch your eye and make you see that it's something different. Now, that is obviously intentional because there are sort of two schools of thought when you buy an electric car. Some people want it to look different and special and weird and kind of show off that it's something unusual and unique and it's electric. Other people want something a little bit more subtle, a little bit more reasonable. They just sort of want an electric car, but they also want to blend in. And this certainly falls into that school of thought. It gives you the chance to have an electric car without broadcasting to the world that you have an electric car for better or worse. Now, next up, I want to talk about cargo space. And that means we start up front because this is an electric car. It doesn't have a giant gas engine under here, so they can use it for other things like cars. Now, to open the front, it's the same way you open a hood in a normal car. There's a little latch in the driver footwell. You come over here, you unlatch it, and then you open it up. Now, from here, there's this big plastic cover. You use this little latch to open the plastic cover, and then you can get in. And you can see there's not really all that much space in here. There's certainly enough room for all the charging cables and probably a little bit more. Maybe you could get a small overnight bag in here or something if you had your cargo area filled up. But it is a little bit more cargo room in case you run out in the rest of the car. And finally, we move on to the rear cargo area, the normal cargo area, if you will. And there's nothing all that special back here. This is about the size you would expect of a cargo area for an SUV of this size. A couple of interesting items that are worth noting. One is the fact that there are little latches back here. You could pull on them and then it drops the seat automatically. You can't like power retract the seat back up, but you can quick release them if you have something back here that needs a little bit more space. You don't have to walk around and unlatch them. The other cool thing back here is underneath the floor, you have storage. Now, a lot of luxury SUVs have storage under the floor, but this has more than almost any other SUV I've ever seen. You can throw a lot of stuff under the floor if you want additional storage beyond what you already have, or if you want something to be out of the way and hidden so you can't look in and see it in the back. And so those are the quirks and features of the Audi e-tron. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how Audi's electric SUV drives. All right, driving the e-tron. Quickly, I want to talk about the styling of this car. You know, I think there definitely are two schools of thought in terms of electric vehicle people. Some people really like their EV to kind of show off that they have something cool and unique and different. I kind of like it to be a little bit more subtle. And so I'm, I'm kind of into the look of this car. You can get an electric vehicle without 
you know, really having to broadcast to the world. But there will be people on both sides of that topic. On the road, it drives already like another Audi SUV, which is actually quite a compliment because obviously it's a totally different powertrain and everything's different and new and weird. But you drive it along, you wouldn't really think that. You have your typical Audi infotainment. You have your, you know, Audi virtual cockpit, your gauge cluster here, which is just fantastic. And everything is, is fairly normal, except, you know, you're not using any fuel. It definitely takes off really quick. You know, the big benefit of electric cars, obviously, they torque at low speed. <laughs> you can't hear anything, which is so funny, because so many of these videos, you can hear the car accelerate, and I'm like, whoa. It does uh, really feel fast. There's no doubt about that. Zero to 60 in the mid fives is obviously fast, especially for a midsize SUV like this. Uh, you know, this is, imagine taking a Lexus RX to zero to 60 in five seconds, but especially your kit right at the beginning, just totally neck snapping. And 500 pound feet of torque is a ridiculous number, um, especially when all of it comes immediately. I do wish the seating position was a little taller. You can tell this from the outside of the car. It's a little lower than you might expect for some, uh, for some, you know, SUVs if you want to sit up high. Probably they did that for aerodynamics. You know, the higher you go, the more you're kind of pushing the air and, and probably lose a little bit of range that way. Feels very stable at higher speeds, you know, like an Audi SUV does. Nothing really surprising there. Steering is kind of light and assisted, like most new luxury SUVs. Um, you know, it doesn't steer like a sports car, but then you wouldn't be expecting that. And frankly, the kind of people who buy it aren't really looking for that. Truthfully, it drives like a fairly normal luxury SUV, which I think is a pretty high compliment because when you when you take a, when you kind of blaze a trail and go for a new powertrain like an electric one, it's kind of a different world and you don't want to really rock the boat too much because you're already rocking the boat considerably in the way the car is propelled, you know, the way you fill it up. Um, and so you want to make everything else be kind of normal, make that transition pretty easy. And I think that is one thing that Tesla has done very fairly well. And I think that this car does a similarly good job of it. Doesn't go too crazy. Like the Fisker Karma had all this crazy stuff, weird design, everything. This car is normal. And I think that's people who will want to transition from a Q5 or a Q7 to this will probably appreciate that. And so that's the Audi e-tron. This is the future of luxury SUVs. A lot of technology and an electric drivetrain. The e-tron is really appealing. And I love the Tesla Model X. It's ridiculous doors and Tesla's noted production problems make the e-tron even more appealing. If you're looking for a mid-sized luxury SUV that plugs in, the e-tron definitely deserves a spot on your shopping list. And now it's time to give the e-tron a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the e-tron is a nice looking crossover, if a bit dull, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Handling is fine, not great, but normal for an Audi crossover, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Fun factor is decent, aided by the instant torque, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Cool factor is okay, this is the interesting new electric Audi SUV, and it gets a 5 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 24 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features, it's loaded with a lot of amazing new tech including the hum and it gets a 9 out of 10. Comfort is normal for the class and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality is good, the interior is fantastic, but long-term reliability is a bit of a question and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is excellent, two rows of seats hurts it a little bit, but the electric powertrain is a big benefit and it gets a 9 out of 10. Finally value and it's priced well, though a bit high when compared with the Model X and the I-Pace and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total daily score of 38 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 62 out of out of 100, and here's how it ranks against rivals. It's on par with the BMW X5 and Audi's own Q8, but a little behind the other electric luxury SUVs in this segment. The e-tron is great and has great tech, but it's a little pricey. Still, it's very much worth a look if you want an electric luxury SUV. Q-U-I-R-K-S-A-N-D F-E-A-T-U-R-E-S -E